Lisa borrows $25,000 to buy a car. She will repay the loan over seven years with monthly payments. She is charged an interest rate of 7.7% per annum compounded monthly. Part A asks how much are her installments. So that means how much is she paying every month. Let's use the finance solver to help, to help us with this. She's repaying the loan over seven years with monthly payments. So N is 7 times 12, which is 84. The interest rate is 7.7%. PV, that's the amount of the loan, that is positive $25,000. PMT, well that's what we're looking for, that's the installments. FV, eventually she will have paid off the loan, so FV should be zero. And PPY and CPY are both 12. Let's figure out how much are her installments. So Lisa is paying $385.93 per month. So now we know how much Lisa is paying every month, but Part B asks us to calculate the principal and the interest paid during the 10th the payment. So this means of that $385.93, how much of that is going towards the principal, and how much of that is just going to be the interest. So the way that we'll do this using the finance solver is we need to figure out how much is the principal changing by? How much does she still owe before and after that tenth payment? So the first thing that we need to calculate is how much she owes before that tenth payment. So after nine payments. After nine payments, and I'm going to change this to exactly $385.93. After nine payments, how much does Lisa owe? She owes $22,917.50. So let's make a note of that number. And this is using our notation from recurrence relations that's V9. So the amount that she owes after nine payments is what we just kept on the CAS, which is $22,917.50. We now need to go back and we want to figure out how much does Lisa owe after she's made that tenth payment? How much does she still owe? So in order to do that, We'll change n to 10, and we're going to recalculate the future value. She owes $22,678.62. So V10 is $22,678.62. That's the amount that she owes after each one of these. So the difference will be how much of the principal she's paid off. So the principal that she pays off in that tenth payment, well that is V10, sorry, V9 is bigger, so V9 minus V10. We can use our calculators to figure that out, and the amount that she pays off is $238.88. So that's the principle. We still need to calculate how much interest. So to figure out that interest, well, we know that in total, Lisa's paid $385.93, of which $238.88 was the principle. The rest will be interest. So let's calculate 385.93, take away 238.88, and we get 147.05 in interest. So the principal, 238.88, and the interest is 147. 
0.05. Make sure we label these correctly. That's my principle. And that is my interest. Part II is the 60th payment. This is going to be a very, very similar process, so I'll work through this quickly. First, we need to find out how much she owes before that 60th payment. So we need V59, and then we need how much she's, she still owes after the 60th payment. We need V60. We can use our CAS to find both of those. So if we go back to our finance solver, after 59 payments, she owes $8,887.82. And after 60 payments, she owes $85,5892. So to calculate the principal and the interest, we do the same calculations as before. So we need to figure out how much principal? That's V59 minus V60. And I'm just going to do the calculations quickly here. So we find out that the amount of principal left over is $328.90. And the amount of interest is $57.03. As we can see, as she gets further along in her loan, more of her money is going towards paying off the principal and less towards paying off the interest, which is what we would expect.